So sorry about the noise in the background, there's an aircraft circling over our house. Um, I got here a Backman 10 wheeler, which uh, I was given as a bag of bits uh, with a request to get it working again. And uh, it's a rather interesting contraption. I'll just zoom out a bit. So the first problem was there was a gear missing and this was actually what I was given it for was can you make a new gear and the answer is well yes we can 3D print this it's it's the gear that the worm sits on top of and then it drives an idler which then drives another gear on the back axle uh, incredibly complex arrangement um, and all right if you've got the uh, say a rigid metal gearbox frame but when all you've got are bits of plastic it it's probably not a good idea but this was completely missing so 3d printed this um, if you want a copy of the file uh, just send me a message um, it's quite a complex thing it's got this these teeth have to be helical and you also have to create a, a form for the worm wheel to ride in uh, because it's 3D printed, you have to watch the uh, the strength of the of these of the teeth, and so the back of the gear uh, and the front, uh, the these surfaces are raised up so that the uh, so they just clear the worm wheel, but provide strength to the teeth. All well and good. The next problem we find is that it's not going to run on the track. Uh, it really doesn't want to and in fact it just won't run at all and that's when I realized that the uh, the pickups were missing it, it wasn't obvious but there's some little notches in here that were presumably once uh, spring wipers and the uh, the little piston plungers here uh, on the that go on the edges of the wheels uh, whilst those did work there's so much flop in the axle and not enough travel in these that they only worked intermittently there's a pair here and a pair here the pair here as you can see this moves a lot this one completely useless there's also pickups on the on the front bogey and I guess on the tender though uh, I haven't got the tender uh, the front bogey I found that the wires from there into here were broken uh, now, while I've been repairing it, it's been a bit of a, a long old haul. So what I've done is I've put longer wires in there and buried down in there is also a connector so I can uh, disconnect this if I need to. So I've now got pickup from the front bogey, but how do I get pickups from these wheels? And uh, I tried looking at the the plungers they're terribly difficult to get at and I whipped out and decided to make my own pickups and these pickups are made from first of all the little I'll take this one off that's probably easier um, let's see if we can zoom in on that so these pickups are a little bent bit of spring steel this is the uh, the metal reinforcing strip from a car windscreen wiper blade and it's nice and springy and it's about the right section uh, to act as a wiper. Now depending how long the, um, uh, the spring is decides how, uh, how thin we need this to be and in fact this was proved too thick for the short um, springs I wanted so I linished it down uh, very carefully and with lots of water uh, but I cut it uh, down to about half the thickness and that made it quite springy you can see here uh, if we got that on full zoom uh, there we go springy uh, so I just bent these to shape and they go into this 3d printed block again I can share the files with you and this sits over the top of one of the um, the, the mounting pillars uh, that takes the screw it goes between there and the clever bit with it is that it's made so that when the axles move 
the block actually rotates and that makes sure that I don't know if you can see yeah I should be able to see it moving uh, that makes sure that even when these wheels move at their full travel uh, the pickups stay in place so I've now got power to the motor so I power it up and what happens the motor bends the chassis and strips the worm gear print another worm gear and look carefully at the chassis it appears to be the right chassis until I spot that this screw is in place 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 but here there's a pillar for a mounting screw and there's no hole in the chassis and this is when I realize that the bag of bits I've got is actually from two locos and in fact all of this and the plastic mechanism are from one type of the very cheap 10 wheeler this is actually from the more expensive end uh, but I've got all the plastic con rods and things which by the way are so stiff it's a wonder the thing moves at all it's a shocking piece of junk but we will get it working uh, so I'd simply drilled a hole there and I've got my extra mounting screw but the motor is held just in a couple of, of clips um, there's one there and one there ignore the white stuff but that is just held there again as soon as you put load on it it shifts and uh, and another gear is stripped so back to the 3d printer and this white set piece here this is this holds the motor uh, and uh, also stiffens up the whole back of the the chassis and gives me a pillar to go onto the rear mounting screw so I've now got rigid setup there put it all together it runs hallelujah so let's put it on the track put it on the track it goes a short distance and starts whirring what's going on the little gears fine what I discover is that the drive gear on the back axle when I look at it it's split and that's a common backman gear gear problem where they've been pushed onto the interference fit uh, the stress eventually cracks the nylon you don't notice it because it still grips it still turns the wheels it's only when you put load on so what to do about that uh, answer was I 3d printed another gear we'll just zoom in on this one um, now you'll see this one's got a big hex hole in it uh, that's because what I did was put the hex in there and then I got a piece of brass hex uh, it was three eighths of an inch uh, don't ask me why it wasn't 10 mil but it was three eighths of an inch brass hexagon drilled a six millimeter hole in it um, and pressed that little brass piece onto the rear axle this then pushed onto it and it was a nice firm fit but not putting the plastic under stress and it's held in place actually once it's once it's assembled I've now got pickups I've got a working gearbox uh, and off we go back on the track and it runs round and round for a while and then stops whirring and I take it out and I find what's happened is the teeth on the on the worm drive have well they've not exactly stripped uh, the the metal the plastic still there what seems to have happened is that it's all got rather too hot for it and uh, I got out a temperature a, th um, a contactless thermometer like the ones you get checked with as you go into restaurants pubs and shops uh, I bought one when they were four quid instead of 40 quid on eBay and um, what I found was that with all this mechanism the, the the awful friction in all of this 
that the motor was getting really hot and that heat uh, and it didn't help by the way that I'd uh, blocked off a lot of the cooling uh, with this support here um, the worm was getting hot and basically softening the plastic on the on the gear <sighs> back to the drawing board so I thought about it and I thought this mechanism is really really complex and I can only assume that Backman did it because making little gears like this the tooling's cheap as soon as you make a big gear the tooling gets expensive so someone has worked out that having a hideously complex multiple gear gearbox is going to be cheaper which would be all right as I say if it had a metal frame which was rigid but this isn't rigid this wobbles about everywhere and the noise it makes when it's running is is awful so uh, go back to basics and let's make ourselves this which is let's just zoom in on that so what I've got here is a big worm wheel it's a 40 tooth uh, 0.8 module metric worm gear um, it comes from China on eBay if you look up 40 tooth 0.8 module you'll find them it's the guts of an industrial uh, gearbox and they send you the worm which confusingly has no central hole for mounting and this wheel and this wheel will run up against the Backman pinion uh, I'm sure it is possible to get the Backman pinions off uh, I haven't managed it and I've only got one of these motors so I didn't try it uh, the uh, the housing is 3d printed again I can send you the file if you want it um, and the the motor is secured with a couple of screws uh, into its front end and there is a screw in the back end uh, I've taken it out for uh, a few experiments there um, and the rear axle runs in the plastic you could put bushes in frankly for the uh, value of this model uh, that was overkill um, and this runs rather nicely so here's the uh, finished assembly I'll just show you how I put all that together so here's the motor and gearbox assembly um, I've had to cut away all the insides the, uh, the gearbox original gearbox mountings the motor mountings I actually found uh, I think part of the reason why this gearbox kept failing which is that the plastic in here had turned into something approximating to butter uh, it wasn't so much a matter of cutting it off as just pushing it off so I suspect the motor was able to move around a lot uh, this is pretty hard so it's not going to move around on the um, I'll just put that in That's it. Um, so uh, you'll see in the base I've put in uh, this plate here and what that does is that provides a cover for the large gear wheel uh, just to stop muck getting into it uh, you'll also see here that what I've done is I've molded into it a pillar that matches up to the pillar on the body there wasn't originally one here I've drilled a hole in the in the base plate and created the pillar in as part of this uh, so that we can attach it close to the axle uh, the axle is actually held by the motor box but uh, when it's running uh, it is actually running on the original bearings it's pushed down that way uh, I've had to cut away the uh, the upper part of the original bearings and rely on the on the ones in the gearbox uh, because these pieces here are where the original bearings would have wanted to go as is part of this gear wheel 
Uh, while I've got this here, I'll just mention that when we first tried it, uh, after we got it working well, we discovered it constantly derailed at the um, on points, and that uh, we discovered was due to the back-to-back -back measurement on these wheels being wrong. Uh, a G clamp brought them back into the right place. So here we are, uh, back fully assembled. You see here the the gearbox covering. I've held the gearbox in with these two screws. They're a, a bit big, frankly, but. Uh, uh, and on the design of this cover uh, that is available, uh, I've moved the screws further out. Uh, otherwise, it's like that.